Hey guys, Tyler here. It seems still that Black Lives Matter wants to abolish the police. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Number one, the fund the police. Policing has failed while police budget has steadily increased. It's time for this unjust one fall to end. Number two, disarm, discommission, and dismiss and the routine practice of officers bearing fatal weaponry. Remove policing authority from any officers with past instances of excessive force. Fire officers who kill or cause serious injury. Number three, close the workhouse. The workhouse is a racist policy failure, an institution that enables the mass criminalization and incarceration of poor black people. Its immediate closure is a necessary step towards re-envisioning public safety as community well-being. Number five, make reparations. There's at least three different things that I found to be wrong that list. For starters, I'm against the idea of reparations, mostly because black people have not experienced slavery, so why should you give money to people who have not experienced slavery? Number two, of course, disarming the police. I do in fact agree that police should not use their guns all the time, but to disarm the police entirely is too much. Let's say, for example, there was like a bad guy with a gun. I think the best solution for that case is to make sure that the police are actually safe and have a weapon against those kind of bad guys that do in fact fire weapons. As far as to, you know, release all political prisoners, again, that sounds too extreme for me. Like, I know for a fact, of course, that like a lot of people who are black are in jail for drug offenses like marijuana. And I do, in fact, believe that those kind of offensive, like those kind of people should get out of prison. Because obviously, I don't think that using drugs is the exact same sort of level as, of course, committing crime like rape or murder or pedophilia or whatever. However, to release everybody, including the rapists and the murderers, I'm sorry, that also sounds too extreme. And of course, to abolish the police, again, we need law and order. Of course, the law is not always perfect. There's always room for changes. But to get rid of the police entirely and to disarm them, like, oh my god, that is, again, too far. There seems to be an update as I record this video. Just literally moments ago, they just announced that they did in fact abolish the freaking police in Minneapolis. Honestly, I'm not surprised about this. I'm really not surprised about that. But I'm not, I cannot possibly imagine this happening throughout the whole entire nation. But then again, it could possibly happen. Demonstrators boo Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fay out of a rally on Saturday after he declined to comment about defunding the police. Jacob Fry, we have a yes or no question for you. Yes or no, will you commit to defunding Minneapolis Police Department? What yes. did I say? Yeah. We don't want no more police. No Is more. that clear? We don't want people with guns toting around in our community, shooting us down. You have an answer? It is a yes or a no. It is a yes or a no. Will you defund the Minneapolis Police Department? All right, be quiet, y'all. Be quiet, because it's, it's, in, it's important that we actually hear this. It's important that we hear this, because if y'all don't know, he's up for re-election next year. Yeah. 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 He's up for re-election next year. And if he says no, guess what the f*** we going to do next year? Louder, 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 I find it so curious that she claims that it's mostly like white people that gun down black people. However, if you really look into the data, what you'll find is that black people actually kill black people more compared to white people. 
Also, according to the data, what you'll find is that white cops are actually more hesitant to actually shoot black people. So, basically when it comes down to it, I don't think necessarily that the question of police brutality is necessarily a racial issue. It seems to me at least that the issue at hand is actually how they actually are trained and conduct themselves. Because obviously what they do is wrong, and so they actually need better training to actually better prepare themselves. I used to think that there is no problem here, but there really is a problem. This issue really is our nation's original sin, and we gotta get over it. We have to make sure that equality prevails. That whole entire statement is really creepy to me. However, I'm not really surprised about the statement, mostly because it seems as though that this whole entire movement right now is very much quasi-religious. Now, I am not saying that social justice or activism is religious in nature. However, the way that people conduct themselves is just awful, just absolutely awful and very religious-like. As you guys saw in my previous video, we saw like a bunch of white people praying, of course, for forgiveness because they're white. We, of course, seen like images on the internet of this little white girl who has a sign that says privilege. And of course, she is taught from a very young age that she's privileged just because she's freaking white. That guy right there also stated that we have an original sin. And that kind of implies that all white people must repent to black people. This whole entire thing to me seems so quasi-religious. It is so creepy. It is so backwards because obviously not every white person is guilty by association. Speaking about little kids, I saw this clip and I also got really upset. No justice, no peace. 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 No justice. Look guys, I have no problems if adults consent to doing this kind of stuff on their free time. I mean, if adults want to believe in garbage, that's entirely fun on them. However, once you start to target kids, once you try to get after those kind of kids who are innocents, who have no idea about the world, who actually depend on people like those kind of people in that kind of clip, I get really upset. I get really upset whether a political group or a religious group use kids as their political mouthpiece. Obviously, kids are not at a freaking age to know about the entire world to make a form opinions. And so obviously, I'm against people using kids to actually indoctrinate them into their personal ideology, secular or religious. And it's just so sad, so, so sad to see that kid get taught so much hatred at a young age. You see, racism, like the stuff we see for Black Lives Matter, is actually taught. No one is actually born to be a racist piece of shit, obviously. And so, it seems as though that they're trying to target kids to pump them to their sort of ideology to become more radical in the future and more racist as a result of that. Racism and discrimination are critical public health issues that demand an urgent response. Hashtag Black Lives Matter, racism is a public health issue. That whole entire claim reminds me so much about Spain, mostly because like the feminists there, before the whole entire outbreak on like March the 8th, they claim that the coronavirus actually kills less than sexism. And of course, there's actually more deaths from the coronavirus than sexism at that point in that country. And so to me at least, I would be more concerned about the coronavirus because there's actually evidence of people getting sick if you're like in large groups of people. And so obviously, of course, racism is serious, but I think the coronavirus is a much more serious issue right now. Speaking about Spain, there's actually a Black Lives Matter Spain, of course, I took the time and effort to translate the clips for you guys. And so, 
Here's a montage of the various clips I found for Black Lives Matter Spain in Madrid. I won't lie to you guys, when I saw clips of Black Lives Matter Spain for the first time, I honestly could not believe it. Mostly because the context of that continent and Spain, of course, which is Europe, does not make much sense. Because we know for a fact, at least according to data, that there's actually less police brutality in European countries compared to the United States. Now, I myself do not agree with Black Lives Matter. Their claim, of course, is that black people are the main victims of police brutality, which is not true because we know for a fact that white people and everybody else are also victims of police brutality. But at least, of course, they have that going for them for United States. Whereas somewhere in Europe makes no sense because they hardly, if ever, do some sort of police brutality there. So to me, at least, it does not make any sense that they're saying that there's no equality in Spain, that there's, of course, police brutality in Spain, when in reality, there's like no such freaking evidence of the source to actually justify their existence in Spain of all places. But anyway, what do you guys think of this video? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler